Hello there, this is Critical from Critical Media. Just taking a look at Image Comics 2024 release of Where the Body Was by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. And what we usually do with this channel is give you an idea of what to expect if you ever come across these books in the wild. So we go over the exterior, some bonus material, art and plot points, and then a brief review at the end. But admittedly, not too much in terms of bonus material here. But uh, this book, yet, yeah, it's another one of those amazing releases by that winning combination of Brubaker and Phillips. So, yeah, in 2023, they released that quick one, Night Fever. But, of course, they've released uh, Criminal, my personal favorite, uh, Kill or Be Killed, and a lot of those Reckless series books. And I would say this book is very much in line with one of those Reckless releases. I'm actually surprised it doesn't have that banner. But in any case, at least walking around the exterior here, it is a hardbound release, a standard hardcover, using that red, white, and black motif, go figure. Uh, but yeah, a very, I guess, heavily influencing uh, cover design there with that body. You know, your traditional spine design, and you know, your typical accolades on the back. After all, it is Ed Brubaker. That's the one thing about uh, this, this writer. He's so damn good. Like, I, f I feel like so many people forget how awesome Ed Brubaker is. He's so good at writing these grounded, visceral type of stories. That's why even when he did superhero stories, he usually stuck with the more grounded characters, like Daredevil or Captain America or whatnot, right? But in any case, uh, looking at the bonus material so far, yes, you're kind of seeing it here where there's not really much going on. Um, basically, Ed Brubaker, he was inspired by those old uh, pulp books, as he mentions, uh, by those map back books so he was kind of obsessive over this you know staging of the area but i'll be honest with you this was probably the one part of the story he didn't really nail because you don't really need this at all this little uh, quick quick little map it is based on of course on some sort of a you know fictitious town and yes it is a period piece i appreciate period pieces set in the 80s and 90s and you're noticing a lot of modern writers are doing this too because to be honest, it's the last time you can write stories, proper detective, intriguing genres, without the advent of the smartphone. That kind of breaks a lot of the logic of modern days, you know, detective stories. But yeah, just another repeat on the back. And yeah, as I mentioned, there's really not much in bonus material. It's really just this afterward and a bit of uh, promotional material there. But yeah, I do appreciate that. Yeah, he, he even mentions how usually with a whodunit, a murder mystery... You start at the ending first, the murder itself, then you work yourself backwards. Um, in this case, he does a, a, you know, a very intriguing ex experiment, that's to say the least. And probably the best part of the book is, a type, is the title itself, Where the Body Was. It's, that's a very, very, uh, what's the word, very esoteric kind of title, especially when you read this story. Because it can have several meanings, like a double entendre, hell, a, a triple entendre. But um, I appreciate that the book kind of starts off like this with the cast of characters, because honestly, it's a very well-contained story. Admittedly, not many of these characters, not all these characters get their shine, but the ones that do, Tommy Brandt, who reminds me of the most of uh, that Killer Be Killed story, Karina, Palmer, Ted and Tony, Jack, uh, Lilo, which you'll probably love, the spunky one after all, uh, Renko, and then Mrs. Wilson. Although, admittedly, um, she really is just the cliche nosy neighbor. And thankfully, Brubaker doesn't spend a lot of time with that character because there's really not much to her, that character. So it does kind of focus on everybody else here. But yeah, in a nutshell, as the story even hints, yeah, there's just a dead body that ends up, on their, <laughs> ends up in their neighborhood. And it's just this big quagmire, this big mystery for many years of how the hell did it get there, what really happened kind of thing. But yeah, it really just starts off with this yeah neighborhood fight that kicks off the summer. Yeah, and then, of course, the characters re getting revealed in a very natural way. Excellent Brubaker storytelling right there. Yeah, you're introduced to the neighborhood cop, or the cop that lives in the neighborhood, I should say. Which all, this whole scenario kind of leads to the, you know, beginnings of this intrigue here with the neighbor, Tony. But yes, um, I, this is where I get a chance to mention... Uh, this is a very mature story, so it does have, aside from, yeah, the writing, which can have profanity, but very adult kind of themes. Yeah, there's a straight-up affair, and there's a lot of graphic nudity and sex scenes in it, so I'll try my best to kind of skip over them. I kind of have to, actually, um, but so I'll just use the bookmarks in this case. 
But um, in this case, though, the story is predominantly, yeah, kind of forwarded by this spunky, you know, I guess, well-doing, well-natured uh, kid, uh, Lila, aspiring superhero, so to speak. Um, but yeah, she's kind of a, in her own way, kind of a, a nosy neighbor in her own right. Um, but you know, she's just making sure everything's all up and track. But I like how she has a very realistic view on the world. Like everybody's up to no good except me, kind of thing. I always like that angle about her. Um, but anywho, as the story kind of progresses, though, yeah, more and more of each character's like anima and history and their personalities come out. And yeah, it's just awesome how well Brubaker kind of outlines everything. Uh, the story kind of has this uh, media res quality. So it's like it's like the characters are constantly being interviewed by the reader, you, the audience. So yeah, they're just giving their testimonies over time of what was going on in their lives and what happened, their account of those events. But I just really like the way, yeah, like every character, they have their ups and their downs, right? Uh, probably one of my favorites here is, yeah, uh, the, these two here, Tommy and Karina. Basically the two junkies where you probably get that best example of, yeah, you hear the word junkie, you're thinking, oh, okay, ne let's forget about them or, or whatever. But they have their own kind of history and their own kind of personality and motivations, you know, through the highs and the lows, through their, you know, their faults, their vices and virtues, right? But I, I liked how each character, they don't, you don't always see everybody get what they want. You actually see, like, yeah, sometimes they have to struggle to get any anywhere ahead in the world or whatever. And they're all going through their own things, so to speak, right? But again, that just adds to that, you know, that proper sense of gravity to the story. That, yeah, it can happen right outside your door. It's that believable. And in that light, yeah. I just like how you see not only see the evolution of these characters, but like the story being in the 80s and these characters being interviewed as of today in like the 2020s. It's very intriguing and very refreshing to see these characters kind of, you know, be honest about themselves from that point of view, you know? Like even this character, Lila, when she had a crush on one of the junkies, uh, you know, her world kind of gets shattered when she was a youngster and makes her grow up incredibly fast in this moment, right? But it's just another another great hallmark of Brubaker's writing. He just knows how to cater to, I guess, more mature readers, you know? And I just, like, I just always like those little snippets to, like, modern day. Just seeing how the characters are kind of dealing with life as it is now. But yeah, I guess as the, the title hinted, where the body was... It's where these characters were in their lives, I'd say, is what it's more so referring to. And, you know, what they're doing today. How, how much people can either stay in that moment or grow beyond it. And yeah, just seeing her being the one that finds it initially and then the whole mystery of what the heck just happened. It's very intriguing. And you can see, like, Sean Phillips maintains that awesome design or, and whatnot. Like, he's able to just capture it so well. And I believe there's uh, another person on this. Uh, Jacob, forgive me, I can't remember the name. But um, he, he uses these excellent color designs to kind of make sure you know which period you're following in each light. It's just overall very intriguing. You know, very uplifting at times and very... Uh, crushing at times as well. Very visceral, very real. Um, yes, I can't get over how much Brubaker just constantly wins every damn time when he comes out with a book. Just so awesome to see. But uh, anywho, I won't spoil the ending, but I do appreciate that there's a certain point in the book where you're like, oh, so that's the end of each character. But then what actually happened? Um, I just love that fact of the book, that at the very end of it, he's like, okay, this is what actually happened. And you're reading it, and it's like, wow, really? That's what it was? And then yet, once again, you just think, okay, no wonder nobody really knew. And no wonder it makes so much sense that the title refers to all these people in their lives way more than the actual murder itself, so to speak. Or, should I say murder, or murder not, who knows? Maybe what you will once you read the book, right? But an awesome release. I can see you, you know, maybe not having to buy it, but maybe definitely give it a chance, give it a read, that's for sure. Because honestly, Ed Brubaker, sorry, <clears throat> Ed Brubaker, every time, all of his stories have this, like, something that you can take with you, you know, and learn from and maybe grow on your own. But it's no longer about me at this point. Hopefully you guys got your own opinions at the end of the day. And I wouldn't mind seeing them in the comments down below. As always, y'all folks take care and enjoy the rest of your day.